Let's talk about comfort. Society's ever-changing standards for comfort are ubiquitous, depending on your region, social class, gender, and even what time period you happen to be in. The idea of comfort can be achieved through one or several elements in life, all tailor-made to be preferred by each individual. One thing is for sure, the search for comfort is constant, unending, and will always be searched for by all of us. So why is it that artists are seen as agents of discomfort? and therefore are presumed to be in their element amidst instability. It's true that many famous artists that we know the names of by heart have to break a barrier of some kind. In many cases, nonconformity was their ticket to fame. But why do we conflate nonconformity specifically with discomfort? Why is something the audience is not comfortable with considered something controversial? If it's within the realm of what an artist feels is comfortable, Furthermore, if the artist is comfortable, does that lessen the merit of your craft, your art, your process, your work, the quality? It's also interesting to note that when we refer to discomfort in the art world, we are mainly referring to the critics, the world, society, rather than the artists themselves. We have presumed that the burden of discomfort comes stocked with the profession, and many believe that this is one of the aspects that develop artists into geniuses that they will be. And we even assume that in many ways, the art lives within discomfort that resides within the artist. But there are differences between every artist, every comfort level, and every piece of work that they create. Not everything comes from the same place. It's no wonder then that artists being perceived as controlled little agents of chaos to be consumed have a distance that inherently exists between them and other artists in a room at a show, and even in a community. It's not so much a school cafeteria setting mapped out with clicks, but a guard that is up for every individual artist. And for many artists, this is a mechanism of safety in more ways than one. This can be a lonely place though, and it's also a place where work can stagnate. It turns out that very much like any other member of society, artists are not controlled agents of chaos, but rather complex creatures of both habit and change. Perhaps our ideas associated with discomfort and the artist are all misdirected, or at least in most instances. Perhaps artists spend just as much time trying to safely provoke themselves as well as their audiences. Turns out, it's not always about you. For this episode, I sat down with Justin Green to talk to him about community and relationships, and more specifically, the importance and role of discomfort in his life as an artist. I'm Amanda Levy, and this is Artist Gripes. podcast artist gripes it is a podcast in which we interview different artists and talk about their concerns today we're going to talk about what are we talking about community and relationships community and relationships so we're going to talk about community and relationships with um a wonderful artist he's a painter he's a teacher he's a writer he's my friend and he is actually designed for me in No Peaking Theater a couple times as well. Um, let's talk to Justin Green. Hey, guys. <laughs> That's his real voice. <laughs> Absolutely. What is going on? Um, so we're going to talk about community and relationships. And I'm not really sure... You didn't reveal what you really wanted to talk about regarding community and relationships. Where are well, we? It's, it's more about artists, um, artist relationships, and um, not necessarily community work, but um, artists making connections. So, morally, main, mainly like artist relationships. I think that um, it's not common. What I'll say is this I see a lot of artists, um, well, I have seen a lot of artists in the past that kind of have been like, um, isolated from like making relationships, particularly artists that want to like work on a larger scale where they're dealing with a lot of people. Um, they have like what they do is like they'll they'll like go on social media 
and they'll just like paint celebrities, for instance, um, to get their business. They'll like do do a lot of celebrity artwork, and they'll do all the hashtagging and things like that. And they're kind of like in their own bubble, where they they don't necessarily want to get out of that bubble and meet new people and and, and spread themselves outside of their four corners. And um, I realized with myself, my personal my personal reasons for for not doing so initially was fear. <laughs> I was um I was afraid of meeting new people, and I didn't want to. I guess I was struggling at the time with imposter syndrome. On top of that, feeling like I wasn't you know like worth or good enough of an artist enough to um, put myself out there. So I kind of was like sneaking and poking my head out here and there on social media. And then I said, well, I don't want to necessarily be like a social media artist or, you know, sell it like that or be that type of, um, have my presence just in that way. I wanted to meet people and um, kind of like have more of an artist circle and um, kind of put my personality out there like that. So um, I began to notice that once I decided to do that, a lot of like random, a lot of random doors and opportunities opened up for me where I was able to do what I really wanted to do, which was kind of have my myself out there as it as an artist, but with people um, starting with like little kids, like, you know, teaching little fun stuff, little acrylic lessons and stuff like that. And then kind of jumping around and meeting new people, meeting other artists and um, building relationships that way. So, um. It was like, it started as like a little frustration seeing like, like why so many people, well, on my, I actually, I followed some people. So it wasn't like, like I was being, like I was choosing the algorithms really, like on my social media, like I was choosing my own feed, but I was like seeing, noticing a lot of, you know, artists that were just kind of hiding and hoping to hit it big on social media by like tagging 50 people, 50 artists and stuff like that. And I'm like, well. Why not, if you really want to be bigger, be a greater artist, why not just go outside of your four corners and just meet new people and go out and build relationships, meet other artists, um, learn how to be better, and, um, you know, just, just stretch yourself out there that way, you know, and, and work out in the community, do some, you know, do some, some community work. And um, that's where, you know, that's where my mind was. And I wanted to I, I apply that to myself and decided to just, you know, um, meet new people and it's working really well I encourage artists to do that you know um, a lot of us are kind of you know we we like our isolation we, we love our alone time our peace <laughs> like that's how we you know and sometimes the studio requires us to be in there for hours on end um, but some artists who want to who have like a greater desire to be around other people I think should get out of their house and meet other people I think that's very important Cool. <laughs> uh, that was fast, Justin. <laughs> you're like, you know, your comfort zone, get out of it. Yeah, basically. Just... And that's it. Mm -hmm, I'm yeah. done. It's like, um, you were like, oh, yeah, me going outside of my comfort zone is working really well for me. How is it working really well for you? Is it a financial gain? Is it a creative gain? What is it? It's it's a gain in every way. <laughs> okay. Like, um, I'll tell you, let me, let me shift my ass a little bit. Um, <laughs> Get comfortable. Put your feet up. It's right, fine. Let me lay like a, like a, um, yeah. a mermaid. Justin um, is, yeah, looking like <laughs> a 1950s snack right now <laughs> on my couch. But it really helped in so many ways. One, financially, um, I definitely did meet a lot of people who want me to do like, you know, um, you know, paint parties. And one, one thing I wanted to do was I did want to make art more of a, of a, of a, of, of a full-time gig. I didn't necessarily... Oh, can you take that off of my right? I hear every time it goes off. It's like, yerk! Oh my gosh. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to... You know, I, I definitely got that. Um, and, you you know, I got more of a consistent flow of income with just doing, um, like, doing paint classes. It's like some very, very simple paint classes in acrylic with people. And, um... I would, I've been doing them, it started in August, it started in August, I decided to just, <laughs> just get out of my comfort zone, and um, 
what I did was I had shared, I had shared a, I shared a uh, Facebook post or Instagram post of my niece and nephew doing something. They wanted to paint with me. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, fine. Well, I'll figure a subject out. So I found this little banana. I said, something, something easy. And I shared it on my Facebook and Instagram. And then someone hit me up. Um, Ian, he hit me up, a friend of mine. He was like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I have a boat and, you know, it's summer. I think we should. <laughs> that That's cat my cat, Shaji. She just stomped. Like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was like, hey, um, I have a boat. You know, you should do you should do a paint party on my, on my boat. And I get a bunch of people out and yada, yada, yada. And it started from there. And, um. <laughs> Yada yada yada. Yeah, I painted on a started painting on a boat, and then all of a sudden, like, you don't people get it. was just asking, like, "Hey, you know, you do paint parties? Let me come to my house. Come here, come here." And then the imposter syndrome started to slowly fade away, <laughs> slowly over over a course of months. And then um, <clears throat> I said, "You know what? I have to take this to a larger scale because." Um, a lot of us that is her crunching oh my god <laughs> hold on we gotta yeah so um after I shared that that video of my niece and nephew painting bananas with me um Ian decided to hit me up he was like a friend of mine he says um you know we should do we should um I have a boat and we should just do some like we should do some a couple paint parties on my, on my boat and then after the paint party it could be like a little club afterwards you know we can paint, store all the stuff somewhere under the boat and then we can just, you know, dance and party all night and we can drive drive the boat around um, the Camden waterfront and then do Philly and all the stuff. And I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm down with it. I don't mind at all. <laughs> so we did that. Um, we had a successful run, the first one. And the first time we did it, um, we handed, like, handed out like little suggestion notepads and everyone wrote down what could have been done better and stuff like that. The second time we did it, it was like, um, it was raining. So we didn't do it that time, but um, afterwards we were just we were doing them. We would take people from the boat to a certain location, like on an island or whatever. We paint on that little strip, and it was just a consistent. It was like a consistent um, request for paint parties and stuff like that. So afterwards, sorry, I forgot I had to. No, it's that. okay. <laughs> Justin is actually laying like a cat on my couch oh, um, yeah. in our living room because. <laughs> That's sometimes where the magic happens, yeah. as far as podcasts go. I was about to say, do I need to get up right now? <laughs> no, just let us know that you're moving your butt, I guess. Yes. Okay. We're interested in that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so where was I? Oh. So yeah, it started from there, and then um, afterwards, then um, yeah, you know, the, the imposter syndrome started to fade away. And then I wanted to like share more of myself on my social media and stuff like that because I figured from where I was from, I came from a very insecure and um, I was hiding a lot of myself. So the more I began to be pulled out, because I honestly, I wanted to be pulled out of my comfort zone. So I asked for it and it happened. I said, let me just take this a little further and um, make more, put myself out there more, make more relationships and more connections. And I decided to just kind of share more stuff. So um, it, it just kind of just went on from there. I recognized how important it, it was to to just step out because not only do you do you grow financially, um, but you grow as a person when you put yourself out there. Your character changes when you put yourself out there in different in different places and meet new people who have different views than you, who have more experience in other areas than you, you can be around and all that stuff. Making that decision uh, to meet other artists or make that decision to meet new people changes you all the way. It's very, very important. We can't sit in our four corners and <laughs> just, you know, just not expect to, um, to kind of just have a, have a social circle. That social circle is a part, to me personally, I think it's a part of building who you are as an artist, is having that social circle. People will come to see you, they will come to your exi- exhibitions, um, you know, more people will come out, support your artwork, and, and different things like that if you just go out and put yourself out there. That's, of course, if you want to be, you know, to be known, or if you want your work to sell. Um, I think it's important to meet people. 
It's almost like, uh, almost like, mm, mm, uh, should I say this? Uh, <laughs> say it. It's almost like how, how what politicians do. They go out and they shake hands and they take photos of everyone and they meet people, but except you're genuinely about that shit. You're not just for photo ops. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're actually genuinely doing the work and you're meeting people and you're, you're you know, putting your, putting your, your footprint out there and giving genuine hugs and genuine handshakes and holding re- really holding babies. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's just on a social connection relationship standpoint. Have you formed, uh, I guess, really meaningful relationships with other artists at this point because you're putting yourself out there? Like, is there are there people that you're like, I genuinely consider them like a friend or I'm so mm-hmm. glad I know them as a colleague? Um, what I'll say is this. I haven't yet. Um, however, what I have done was um, I have been reaching out to uh, like artists that I really genuinely like look up to. Uh, I've decided to do that. <clears throat> I don't know. I, you know, social media makes everything so accessible. Mm-hmm. Like, so I I forget that. You know, I used to I would go on Twitter to you know to shout out my favorite like music artists. But I'm like, wait a minute, I forgot this Instagram. There's you know, there's people, there's other artists that I look up, which I like, <laughs> I can mm-hmm. just say hi to. Um, one of them, Andrew Tischler, I, uh, he's, a, he's a really excellent artist. I like him. Um, I had a little conversation with him on Instagram, and he's into podcasts. And he's just <laughs> like, oh, you know, I like motivational stuff. Listen to motivational stuff that's really good for you. You know, I'm looking, learning how to, he was telling me how he was learning how to, um, uh, like it's like he, she's trying to basically basically do better and mm-hmm. he wants to um, work harder and, and build income and, and things like that so he was just talking about different podcasts to get into and he was like tell me what podcast you like forward me some stuff and he forwarded me some stuff and um, I kind of have this thing where he knows it's me when I hit it when I like comment on his stuff I call him Andy Mm-hmm. And I like I say Andy long like Andy <laughs> on like anything he posts. Um, I you know I, I respect him and I have you know, but in terms of like personal like personal relationships, I would say just uh, I would say just like I would say one one right now. He's a watercolor artist. And he lives about about like twenty minutes away from me. Oh well, that's close. Yeah, he lives in Cyclago. Um But yeah. Now then, there's Joe, of course. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Basically, you're not my friend anymore. You're Joe's friend now. <laughs> you know, like, but in terms of like, you know, artists that I genuinely like, genuinely like, respect and, and look up to. That's that's the thing I'm, I'm wanting to put myself around more. It's, it's a part of, like, you know, growing. It's all of it is tied into it. Yeah, you want relationships, you want social relationships, but you definitely want to grow as an artist, too. Mm-hmm. All of that comes out of stepping out your comfort zone. Um, that's that's my biggest, that's my biggest, like, recommendation <laughs> for artists is you just, you, you got to be comfortable with being, like, extra uncomfortable with, <laughs> you know, growing and developing and all that good stuff. Well, how long does that, I mean, I guess, how do you take that approach when you're somebody that is either introverted or sometimes antisocial or doesn't like crowds or doesn't like social situations or gets anxiety in these cases? I mean, uh, do you sort of walk into a room like, I want to do better, I want to do better, I want to do better, and then because you want to do better, that sort of is what fuels you to say hello to people or do you well, have to like what is your prep like what do you say to your head like all right justin I'm about to do this like well it comes from <laughs> it came from it, all right so this is i always resort back to this thing and i and it, and it may sound repetitive to so many people at this point because i always talk about this this painting called the fisherman but i genuinely um okay so the fisherman painting i i, I started um in late 2017 after like a okay so Long story short, I had to face some shit about myself, and um, I had to, like, you know, begin the process of realizing why I was attracting a lot of, like, bad relationships, and I had to look at myself and see my own bad habits and stuff like that. One of them 
um, one of them was uh, related to my fear of meeting new people, and it was just like this, you know, this self dialogue of you're not good enough. So, in turn, I decided to after having and this this process this painting took a couple months, partly because I was procrastinating with it and I didn't know how to go about it. And the other part was that I knew I wanted to share it, but I was still dealing with that imposter syndrome. Like, if I put this out there, like, you know, uh, I'm not making this claim like I'm like this amazing artist, but this, I have a message. I really want to share this message because I was growing. Mm -hmm. So it started, started from there. My fear, my like getting over that fear of meeting new people started from me um, channeling out into artwork, but it was tied into a whole bunch of stuff, that, that painting. So it, what I do now as a result of that is that whenever those thoughts come of like, um, you know, when you want to meet a person, you, you start to like have this dialogue with like, how do you approach them? What do you say? Da, 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 da. You just talk. <laughs> you just, I just, I tell myself to just speak as if, speak as if I'm talking to myself. How are you doing? What's up? You know, whatever you want to talk about. Hey, what, what's the worst that could possibly go wrong? If you tell them, Hey, I'm an artist and I'm struggling. <laughs> or with, with a particular, I don't know how to glaze. Um, I just met you. Can you help me? Like, what's the worst that could possibly happen? Like, they could say, no, I don't know. I don't fucking know you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you just, you just be yourself. And it, it takes, it takes work. Um, half the time I had people, like my partner, for instance, he would just randomly show people like, oh, Hey, Jay, he paints, you know, he does this and people will come to me and I, people will come to me. But after a while, I got tired of like being all meek and mm -hmm. just like damn near shivering like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and I decided to just go like, hey, you know, yeah. how are you? I just I approach them how I just genuinely just feel like I'm, I'm feeling happy. I want them to feel happy. I just talk and then it just goes into that. But um, I don't necessarily have like an agenda per se. Mm -hmm. I just I just taught myself to just be myself <laughs> because I I have it <laughs> for such a long time. I'm just <laughs> I'm like, hey. Has there ever been um, a time where it sort of didn't work? And I'm sure it has. I'm sure there. I mean, I believe we've all been to these parties where somebody's just laughing a little too boisterously, a little, a little bit more confidently to where it's like no longer confident, to where it's like cocky and pretentious, or maybe people are just nerding out at a more sophisticated level than you. Um, I'm. I mean, I believe we've all been to those like stuffy parties, or I, to one where we're like, oh, this is not. This is not my element. Has there been a situation like that where it didn't work? And what did you do in order to like be like, well, hmm. on on we go. We're going to go forward. Have I ever been in that element before? I've been to art galleries. And I'm not going to say too much because this is when I know I can, I can fuck some shit up. So I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm, I'm going to watch... I'm, now I have to like put on some scapels for shoes and just be very careful where I step. <laughs> okay. No. So. Um, so much for artist gripes, you know. I can't get a, I can't get a person too gripe. And you know I, what? I am gonna have an episode about this. Like I'm gonna be like, listen, I made this thing called artist gripes. I was like, let's talk about the things that we really don't like don't to admit. I don't want to say the wrong thing because what, because sometimes I get into that. I, I, my emotions take over. And then I'll just say some shit that'll just be like, Ugh. so what I'll say is this, that happens very often in city galleries, that type of stuffiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe there's so much hesitation right now. It's just so much. And the work is mediocre. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I'm yeah. not going to say nothing else. Okay. It um, happens. It happens. Um, uh, in like really expensive South Street Philly galleries. Oh, we just got more specific. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I told you, I, my scalpel stilettos just became oh, flat. Because now I'm just stumping mud boots. everywhere. Shit. <laughs> All right. Let me be careful. Um, 
This is the beauty of editing, by the way. Like, okay. if you don't want that in here, we don't have to put mm, it in. It could stay okay, because okay. I'm still going to be. I'm going to be careful. Some spaces where you would think that because they they appear to be very. I don't know if if I would call it contemporary. Would I call it contemporary? Consumerist style art yeah. work. Wow, your head is just like I, I don't know how to define down. it. I don't know how to define it. I really don't. I'm trying to understand that. Maybe because I don't know the language like that. But you would think in those environments it would be a lot more um, welcoming. Freeness, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's very, very pretentious. Mm-hmm. So, I don't frequent those places. Um, and, and the work from from where I come from or from where I am heading towards would view that as very mediocre. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would expect that from more fine art, traditional style, realist gallery spaces, but that doesn't exist. If anything, the people that I've met so far, um, Joe, for instance, and you know, I haven't met formally met Andrew Tischler, but he's cool as shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's not about that other stuff. But, you know, that's why I find myself just able to, because I'm like, oh, Joe's cool. You know, I don't have to, you know, hi. I can just be, you know, just got to be chill. Just, <laughs> you just do me, right? Yeah, I don't have to be, like, I don't have you to be that. Like, I, can just, you know, I don't have to, like, I can't. You know, like, you hear my, like, sphincters getting tight. And I'm oh like, my God. <laughs> Is you that know? what you think of when I go honey? No. Oh. <laughs> but you know, sometimes, you know, we just, we tend to, we tend to put this, I don't know, we tend to project a lot of shit and it's just not necessary. You know, that actually brings uh, up an interesting point as well. So you were like, get out of your comfort zone, just get out of it. But it does sound like you have sort of curated just now you're like oh you know there are these specific galleries in the specific city around the specific part of yeah. town and those places are stuffy or those places are pretentious mm-hmm. and this is how i feel about the work and i don't frequent those places so it's not just go anywhere go to an alley where they're hanging up canvases or go well, go anywhere yeah, you can go anywhere i think it's best because you then learn what works for you yeah i do encourage you to do that i do encourage people to do that just go and you'll learn mm-hmm. you'll, you'll know where your personality is received and where it's not um you'll learn when you know people are willing to share or work with you or you know invite you to this you know you'll know you'll be able to tell um You'll tell. You you'll be able to tell in time, but I definitely think that you should you shouldn't just just go with an open mind wherever you go. Go and and then I'll tell you. You'll definitely learn. <laughs> you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> you will learn. I I mean I just thought it was interesting because it was like yeah go outside of your comfort zone and then you also mentioned something about social media and you're like you you're setting those algorithms you're curating that stuff for mm-hmm. yourself and what you're surrounded by so there is a an element of that it's not just like felt uncomfortable just keep on doing it even though it feels awful to you all the time no matter what yeah, there's got to be a sense of yeah when you feel like the cushion under your feet where you're like oh. Mm-hmm. This is good. Okay. Yeah. It's not so bad. This is even down to like I'll say also even down to like when I'll say this because sometimes artists sometimes when we we might be fixed to a certain certain practice or a certain tradition maybe sometimes we may not necessarily feel feel like we should make connections with those who have different styles. I used to be that way. Um why I didn't necessarily all right let me be careful again okay hold on (laughs) there was a time when I didn't necessarily I wasn't necessarily open to art outside of traditional way of painting that's all I'm going to say (laughs) and you know I said I'm going to I'm going to change it about myself I don't want to be so fixed to just one particular group I don't want to do that I want to definitely go out and meet different style art different art styles and I'm glad I did. So what's the defining factor on like whether something is worth giving a try or what what is the kind of discomfort that's sort of worth it 
and encourages growth or versus like the kind of discomfort where like this is bad for you what it's like it's like just meeting a person like if you know something like you it's like going out to it's like dating you know or like going to a mixer you never know you just go and you talk and if they like you they like you if they don't they don't and then you just keep on moving mm -hmm. i just noticed a like a sort of like a pattern in that particular um area where it was just kind of like okay no <laughs> they're like i don't want to know you as an artist i don't fucking want to i don't care who cares look at my shit and get or get the fuck out it was kind of like kind of mm -hmm. like that it's like i don't feel like meeting you or do you have an it could it could very well be like i don't necessarily know 100 percent what's on their mind at the same time mm -hmm. they might they could, could be thinking that hey you may have an ulterior motive I don't know, you know, what their what their thoughts were or whatever the case is, but you know, it was kinda of like But then again you can tell when someone is being like fuck you. <laughs> That's <laughs> you can, true. You can tell. You can kinda of pick up on certain things. But. So what exactly do you think the takeaway is gonna be? This is obviously advice for artists, is that is that correct? Yeah, advice yeah? for artists. Um, definitely if you want to, if you definitely want to be to be a full time artist, I mean, if you want to expand and grow as an artist, you have to meet new artists. You have to meet new people. Um, if you, of course, want to grow in your particular in your field of study, associate yourself with others in that field of study. Um, work really hard, but work not really hard at perfecting what you do, but work on your character at the same time because that all translates into your work. Um, it really does. It, it makes you more. It makes you more well, well rounded. Um, so you're not just a hermit, or um, you're. You know, you just have. You're just an overall better person. Personally, that's what I think. And not to mention, if you want to, you generate again. You have people you know. You generate more income, um, and you have better relationships. You know more people. I think it's. I think artists should know a lot of people personally um, but those relationships are very important to to sell as an artist but then again some people are just really powerful artists and may not need to do all that but I think sometimes I think we we should try the option of getting away from being hermits sometimes mm -hmm. I think we should get away from that just you know just try it out look listen here here's here's the takeaway <laughs> this is now just this podcast look, he's look, like look, I'm gonna say this listen, I, listen, and listen try, good try like for like <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you to like cause you have to build up the courage you, know, you can't build up no courage in like 10 days but let me just let me throw a hypothetical takeaway hypothetical form of advice for like 10 days straight <laughs> try to like meet new people you can just meet new people Meeting people. Ten days is a long time. It's a long time. Just try to meet <laughs> people. Go to a bar. You know, introduce yourself as an artist. Have some, you know, maybe some business cards. Um, not necessarily like sell yourself as a desperate artist, you know, but just you know, just assert yourself. That's all. Assert yourself as an artist, and you know, meet new people, make relationships, be kind, and genuinely kind. Um, you know, and just maybe I look at that as a form of marketing. That could be a form of marketing, but you know, mm -hmm. without the um, <laughs> without the um, just marketing strategy. Work. Yeah, with the, the strategy of just uh, of just being just straight up, just completely impartial. Yeah, you know, we're gonna bring some love into it. <laughs> Put some sugar, spice, everything nice in the oh sugar. My God. <laughs> That's what I think. Fine. Away, well, now you know what you. Well, now we all know what you think, mm -hmm. yeah, think about nice. galleries on South Street <laughs> in Philly specifically. Um. Well, thank you so freaking much for doing this. You're <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much for listening to Artist Graves. This is our first episode, and we will be interviewing different artists of a different discipline every week in order to further dispel the stereotypes and problematic presumptions about artists. Also, just so you know, Justin Green has his own podcast, and it's called The Painted Fool, in which he speaks about his process, his work, and his development as an artist and constant student of life. Check it out.